Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Second round of the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayakoba, and it was 33-year-old Russell Henley who pulled away from the pack this afternoon with a second round, eight under 63. No bogeys on the card at all, which puts him at 16 under and a three-stroke lead heading into the weekend. And following his round, he caught up with Todd Lewis. Yeah, Russell follows up yesterday's 63 with an identical 63. I mean, over the last two days, Russ, the game, from our perspective, looks pretty easy. Does it feel that way for you? Um, I'm definitely feeling confident with my game. Um, off the tee, I feel good. Um, I feel like my decision making is pretty good and um, been rolling in some putts, too. So, I, you know, I definitely have been riding some momentum and, um, you know, I'm obviously very happy with how I'm playing. Yeah, not only do you have 60 birdies, not a bogey on your card in two rounds as well. Did you anticipate playing this well when you made your way to Mexico? Well, you know, the, the first two events of this season, I struggled a little bit and I've been working with my driver a little bit, made some changes there and, and making some changes with my putting. Um, just so I've been feeling pretty good. I felt pretty good the last two days of the CJ Cup and just tried to keep practicing that on my off week. So I was feeling pretty good coming into the week. What were the big bullet points that you changed with your driving and your putting? Yeah, I, I was getting a little too under and, and drawy with the driver and just wasn't able to get through the ball. So I've been trying to hit some little fades. And um, with the putting, just a little better speed. You know, my tendency is to has been to get a little nervous on the shorter ones and just kind of get a little quick and hit them a little too hard. So Andy and I have been working on just a little better speed and just done a lot of drills inside 10 feet trying to just get my confidence up. Finally, we're at the halfway point. You know, they don't hang on trophies on Friday. Uh, but is there anything you, uh, this is a surprising question, is there anything you'd like to do better on the weekend? Uh, compared to other times where I've been playing well, I just want to enjoy it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's definitely something that means a lot to all of us and we all want to play well out here. and. Um, just remember to enjoy the competition, you know, and just not hope that it, hope that it's, you know, that not look so much to the end. Just kind of enjoy the, enjoy the moment. Well, you're playing with freedom, and it surely shows out there. We should the best on the weekend. Thank you, Russ. Thanks, I appreciate it. Well, it was Sam Ryder who set the early clubhouse lead this morning. Seven under through his first nine holes, made the turn in 29, slowed up a little bit on his second nine, but it was a second round of six under 65 to put him at 13 under. So let's hear from him on his thoughts of the day. It was uh, a lot like yesterday. I uh, came out and just didn't really miss much on the front, was playing really solid, driving it well. Making some putts is always nice. Had one chip in, um, pretty simple, and then kind of just got a little loose um, on the back. And this place kind of, with a little bit more wind, it, it can be a little bit nervier um, off the tee. So I think I just, I kind of got a little out of sync there, but I managed it pretty well. And, and it was kind of the tail of two nines for me, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way I got it around and, and just gonna kind of continue to keep doing what I'm doing. So Sam Ryder in the chase for his first PGA Tour win, but the low round of the day today belonged to this man, Harry Higgs, nine under 62, bogey free, with that eagle on the third, hitting 17 of 18 greens, uh, which puts him at 10 under par, full back of the lead. And he spoke to the media very openly about the struggles that he's recently experienced with his game. Where are you at sort of mentally right now when you think about what has happened results-wise maybe over the last couple sure. of tournaments, but then into this week and this round in particular where you think, where has this been? <sighs> I mean, all over the place. Like, I have had a lot of poor days and a lot of consecutive poor days. And then I've also had... Not as many as I would like, but I've had some days that were great, where I had full control, I was making good decisions, I was kind of, you know, as we all say, getting out of my own way. I was not doing that maybe two, three times a month. Um, I feel like I did a good job. I made one poor decision yesterday. Um, I feel like, obviously, today is today. You, you didn't make any poor decisions, you shot nine under par. Um, and it's only going to get more difficult now, right? It's. Tomorrow, like I have, I have a lot to play. We all have a lot to play for, but I have a lot to play for. Like I had a very poor year by my standards, and and am kind of fighting uphill for the entirety of this year. This week is a bonus that Worldwide Technologies, 
you know, gave me a sponsor exemption. Um, and for the last probably five, four, five, six months, I show up to go. I'm preparing the same way. I'm probably borderline working too hard and too much at home and, and here. And a few too many times, almost, actually, sorry, almost all the time, I go on the first tee for a competitive round, and I don't really know what's going to happen, which is a really not fun place to be. And there's, there's uh, you know, doubt and uncertainty for every one of us, and we all have to deal with it and fight through it. Um, but I felt like from the start yesterday afternoon until, you know, I finished today, that I allowed myself, and this is something that I usually am good at, I allowed myself to, as I would say, spiral upwards to continuously start to feel more and more comfortable from good decision making, like thinking through shots and, and where to miss and all this, you know, good club selection and kind of like good, I guess in a way, visualization before I hit it, but then also just trust. Like my golf swing still doesn't feel as I want it to feel. Um, and I don't know that it's going to, right? And But clearly that doesn't really matter. If I can continue tomorrow to spiral upwards and feel more and more comfortable and more and more certain in what I'm doing, then I love my chances, right? But I also have to be careful when I hit a poor shot or make a bad decision to not react as poorly as I have been because that spirals me straight down. I mean, it's and then it's just an uphill battle. And I have I, Honestly, I've acted so poorly for so long at shots that were not even really that bad that I, like, I don't have a chance to gain that certainty and gain that kind of, you know, it's confidence, right? So long-winded answer, it's everywhere. Um, but I know what, the problem is I'm, I'm too self-aware too. Like I know when it's going on and I know when it's bad how I act and I know when it's good how I act. So I'm going to get away from all of this and rest and relax and, and think about kind of how the last two days have gone and just kind of focus on a, a thing or two that is not my golf swing and not what club do I hit here about how to continue, you know, continue to spiral upwards and give myself the best chance um, heading into the weekend. Well, another big name to bounce back today following his opening round of even past 71. That is two-time major champion Colin Morikawa heading out there today, firing an eight under 63, hitting 16 of 18 greens. Morikawa, he's going to have to dig deep over the weekend, but he has given himself a chance out in Mayakoba. Well, in other news, round one of the Timber Tech Championship, the second event of the three tournament Charles Schwab Cup playoffs on the PGA Tour Champions. And it is 58-year-old Miguel Angel Jimenez who takes the early round one lead with an opening round 67, just doing one stroke advantage over a chasing pack, including the likes of Scott McCarran, always a contender on this tour. Monty as well at two under par alongside England's Paul Broadhurst. So a lot to play for as they head into these playoffs. And as we take a look at the uh, Charles Schwab Cup standings, Stephen Elka with a huge advantage at the moment on these standings, having four wins so far this season. It's just the top 36 players on the standings that will advance to the Charles Schwab Cup Championship at Phoenix Country Club in Arizona next weekend. And that is it here on your Golf Central update. We'll be back tomorrow for live third round action out there at Mayakoba. Going to be a great weekend. We will see you then.